The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. I'm partner Malik Hill, and uh, we're into November. We're into the cold season. Oh, I forgot you were going to do this. <laughs> this is the new setup. Um, we have the moment where all sports are on, basically, at this point. We got NBA action, college basketball started up, college football going, NFL, and there's controversies all over the place. Where would you like to start, sir? First of all, I'd like to say Tom is always a fraud. Okay, that's where we're going. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's not where I'm going to start. Uh, where I'm actually going to start is uh, it's a great time of the year. The most important sport right now is uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night matching. Stop. Figuring out who's going to win the MAC right now. Toledo is 9-1. and one. They just came off of smacking Eastern Michigan. Very impressed with the Toledo Rockets, Joey. The only thing that I saw Very is that impressed. Western beat Central. <laughs> They did be sent a very impressive win. So the big rivalry. They should have started Hayden Wolf earlier in the season. They're on the drive for six. They're four and six. Beautiful. The action is alive. Lovely. Yes. We love. How are the you Mac. doing, Joey? I'm doing good. I don't know how to take you. <laughs> Listen, the the vibes are immaculate. Okay. The vibes are tremendous. All right. Well, while the vibes are good, let's talk about some tr- terrible teams around our area. <laughs> let's do it. Uh. Starting with the Pistons, because we don't need to go over a ton of NBA stuff. <laughs> Neither of us have watched much of the the in-season tournament. I, I feel like it's kind of being a flop. I I've don't, watched highlights. I don't know. I don't feel like too many people are talking about it. I don't think too many people care about it. I think the NBA got lucky because almost every – the first night of in-season games, almost every night, every game was close. Yeah. Like every game came down to the last few seconds – so it made it appear that it was more high stakes. Right. But they were they were regular season games. I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's like the season just started and they ha- they, yeah. they throw the tournament right at the beginning. Really, really weird timing. Yeah. Um, so we, we touched on the Pistons a little bit last week, but um, they're kind of continuing the same path uh, that they were last week where they just, they can't figure things out. Their rotations are a mess. They're still turning the ball over, um, and there's been bright spots here and there. Um, I don't know. I can't get Killian Hayes out of my head, and I think that's a Listen, lot of people's problem. Well, let's start with the positives. Let's let's save the big negative. Okay, the young so, guys. Cade is a All Star level player. Yeah, it's he's becoming what we hoped he would. The turnovers are still a problem, mm-hmm. but. After not playing an entire season, him missing his whole sophomore season, yeah, I expect Rust even through like 10, 15 games. Right. But he's averaging like 22, 7, and like 3, or 22, 7, and 4. Yeah. What more do you expect from a guy that was your number one pick and is coming off of a season-ending injury? Right. Yeah, and the turnovers are going to happen when you have the ball in your hands that much. Um, but I hope that he's, he's getting into his groove because he has been playing really good. Um, obviously the injuries are still a problem. We still got a lot of the, uh, the veteran guys are on the mend with Monte Morris and Bojan Bogdanovic. Yeah. He, Alec Burks has been out the past few games and he was a huge help. Yeah. He was helping the, the bench unit for a while. <laughs> um, the other bright spot is Marcus Sasser. He's looked even better now. Uh, he just looks confident knocking down shots, playing well as a rookie and he's making the most out of the minutes that he's getting. He's playing really good, good defense, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, for a draft class that I think we were a little bit worried about, just a little bit. Both rookies look like hits so far. Yeah. Right now, they're both looking both looking really good. So, it's kind of a wait-and-see moment. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the biggest problem right now with this team is figuring out the rotations. 
obviously the big buzz is Killian versus Jaden versus Monty Williams. Um, because there seems to be some sort of disconnect between Monty and Jaden Ivey. And for some reason, he loves Killian Hayes. And nobody's sure why. I personally think a big part of it, I think it's NBA politics. There are times where a player that was drafted highly Mm -hmm. and is in their second or third year, and there's almost like a deadline. Like, we have to see what we can get out of this guy, whether it's for, like, trade bait or if he stays or not. We have to give this guy as many looks as we can because we invested so much into him. Yeah. I understand that slightly. But you could, but that's like for both of those guys, like both Killian and Jaden Ivey have high draft capital. True. So like, it that's where it even more so that's, that's where I said sense. slightly because, yeah. like, I I wouldn't mind Javen Jaden coming off the bench if there was a better player mm-hmm. playing in the position of Killian Hayes, and it's making it even worse because, like you said, Marcus Sasser, he he's doing stuff that. Even Killian still can't do in year three. Mm -hmm. Like, he is a natural ball handler. He is a natural shooter. He had to defend to play at Houston, so he knows how to play defense. He's giving you everything that Killian is supposed to give you and more. He's 10, 11 games into his career. He has a 26-point game, 22 points, 20. I think he had three games over 20 points. And I, I just don't understand. Yeah. It Outside of the theory that it, it's probably NBA politics, but yeah. at some point you got you got to stop it. Yeah, I think the most important thing will be is when Monte Morris comes back. What are they going to do? Because if when Monte comes back and maybe he scores or starts, if Killian is still getting more minutes than Jaden and could, Marcus Sasser, yeah, there there could be a problem. Yes, and it wouldn't be just between fans. Like I can I could see. Especially Jaden getting upset about that. Everybody would know something is off. Yeah, and I think that'd be understandable. And I'm not, I'm not sure what the disconnect is or what Monty is hoping to get out of Jaden that he's not seeing um, necessarily. Um, I had heard some things about like decisiveness and things like that, but I don't know. I haven't watched a ton of the game, so I can't give a ton of advice right now but that's just not my focus at the moment but it is a little bit concerning that you know a lot of people were really excited about Jaden last year thought he was going to make a big jump this year and he's taking a step back so I don't know and it's not his fault yeah it seems like it's really not his fault at all yeah it's just the coaching staff or something just isn't on the same page. It almost seems like front office decisions are coming into play. Maybe, but why? Because I, I wouldn't understand a coach like Monty Williams, who had C- CP3 at his prime. He knows what high-level guard play looks like. Mm-hmm. He's not just – he doesn't just think Killian Hayes has this incredible ceiling and that it's just going to unlock at some – like, mm-hmm. he's seen the best of the best. Yeah. I don't know. It's disheartening. It's disappointing. Um, Pistons are two and seven now. Yeah, unfortunate for Killian. I mean, everybody's piling on him. Yeah, it sucks. He's trying his best, mm-hmm. but the kid just doesn't have the goods. Yeah, he does not have it. And he might be better with a, with a like a reset or something, or being on a better yeah. team. I don't know. I don't he know. he plays best when he is in full control. Yeah, and there is no scenario in Detroit where that happens. Right. Like, whenever Cade is out, like, he had 21 mm-hmm. and four the other night when Cade was out. Yeah. Like, as as a secondary guard, Killian does not serve much purpose. Right. Yeah. Who knows? Um, Other note that we wanted to touch on with the NBA, Lakers still stink. Three and five. They lost Lakers by a three and five. 30 to the Rockets of all teams. Yeah, they uh, they still have to be carried by LeBron. Who listen? I'll admit it. He's in year twenty one. I don't. I don't know why he has this Terminator robot DNA, where he can still just walk through and run past everybody. Yeah. At his age, it's something else to watch. Mm-hmm. But this isn't supposed to be happening. Yeah. Like he's not supposed to be carrying this team. Right. 
And uh, sucks for Lakers fans. Suck for Lakers fans. Yeah, but we don't care. It happens, though. But we yeah. don't care about them. It is what it is. Um, And then, of course, the other side of L.A., who made the big trade the other week, or last week, I mean, uh, they are 0-2 with uh, James Harden. And they looked worse in the second game than the first. Yeah. yeah there, there were a lot of plays that looked like they almost have never played together. Hmm. Like just adding James Harden <laughs> made them look like they just had zero chemistry. Yeah, it's like the problem that we figured might happen is like they don't know who's gonna shoot. And it's funny because you think James, like everybody was like, "Oh, James Harden is coming. Russell Wes- Westbrook is gonna take a back seat." Well, <laughs> Russ has been getting his shots up. I didn't. Think, I didn't think Russ was gonna take a back seat. But I think a lot of people did. I just had no idea how it was going to work. Yeah. <laughs> but Russ doesn't take a backseat to anyone. We know this. I know. This is how it is. Yeah. Like, he, he had to take a backseat for the Lakers, and we saw how that went. Right. I was going to say, if anybody's taking a backseat, it's been James Harden yes. on this team. And, and he, he said, and I quote, I'm not a part of a system. I am a system. Yeah. which One of, one of the great sports quotes <laughs> of the year. Which right now, he is a part of a system. Yes. And he's not doing much in that system. So, I don't know. Kind of some funny things about the NBA. but I feel like they might blame it on Ty Lue. They might try to hire a new coach and they just might. fix whatever that's, this is. That's the NBA but way. What coach do you get to fix this? Mm. It's like the, the personalities don't fit. The, yeah. the play styles are just all over the place. Mm-hmm. And you got rid of some key things, right. including defense and consistent shooting. Yeah, I agree. Who knows? All bums. Right. Let's go bums. to some other bums. Michigan State basketball. <laughs> I hate to even ten say out of it. ten segue. I hate to even say it. Um, no, I, I, I kind of, you know, I don't worry about it too much. People are gonna make obviously They're a big deal about good. it. Yeah, it's it's definitely an overreaction. But Michigan State lost their first game to James Madison. The team we've been talking about all season long in football, um, and they've already made a name for themselves in Listen, basketball. It looks they, like. Their athletic department is on a high right now. Yeah, because everything is up for James Madison at the moment. Right. Um, Michigan State, the big problem. They made one three. They shot Single three five percent, one for twenty. They also shot sixty two percent from the free throw line. And Tyson Walker, they who's, started like one of nine from free throw. It was yeah. Crazy. And Tyson Walker, who's normally an eighty percent shooter from the line, shot eleven of seventeen. Um, and it was just it was just bad all around. Uh, James Madison also didn't really shoot that much better, but they shot enough better <laughs> to win in overtime, seventy nine seventy six. Um, and Michigan State just kind of looked the same as last year a little bit. Now I'm hoping the freshman guys will get it going because they looked pretty good. Um, but there's a lot of room for improvement, obviously. The biggest problem that I've had with this team the last couple of years, their offense sucks. They just stand around, dribble, dribble, pass, dribble, dribble, pass, dribble, dribble. Like there's not a whole lot of movement to this offense. Who do you blame for that? Who else can you blame but the coach? <laughs> Now, that's a thing. Like, I'm usually the guy that's like, the players got to play. The coaches can only do so much. But in this scenario, when your offense is stagnant, the coach has to put in more plays. Because obviously, they're not moving around enough by themselves. Um, You have a starting line full of seniors. I mean, a starting five full of seniors. Yeah, a lot of seniors that uh, were supposed to be good when they were freshmen. Here's my thing. I'm not worried about the freshmen. I think they showed good signs. Tyson Walker is probably going to be their leading scorer. Yeah. <clears throat> why are your fourth and fifth year players? Why do they still look like second year players? Mm-hmm. Matty Sissoko's looked the same since he's been a freshman. He he just doesn't have like much of a shooting like instinct, mm-hmm. offensive instinct or touch. Yeah. I can't really blame him for that. He's more I, he's a big body. I think he needs to lose his starting job. I'll say Listen, it. I still have faith in Jackson Kohler, but he didn't play. He was in street clothes. Yeah. AJ Hogger doesn't look much better. 
Malik Hall still looks like a guy that's just just going to give you spurts of offense. Mm-hmm. <sighs> like what? How are your most experienced players? The honest, the reason why they're ranked fourth in the country is yeah. because of their experience yeah. and, and everything they brought back. A lot of people were super excited about Jaden Nakins after his big tournament. He could still have a really good season. I still think Jaden Nakins could be good. He could. That was a bad. That was a rough start. But it's just a. It's a bad start for everybody. And that's what I mean. Like AJ Hoggard, as much as I hate him, he struggled in this game. Jaden Nakins, those guys really stepped yeah. up at the end of last season. Where was the st- Where was the stability of the of the seniors? Right. They're supposed where they're supposed to calm everything down, mm-hmm. get everything settled, and get some easy baskets and get some stops. Yeah. Where was that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would like to honestly see, and I don't know if he's going to do it, and it might take a minute, but as the season progresses, I would like Tom Izzo to put pressure on those seniors by slowly giving the freshmen more and more minutes. And that's what he said in the post game. Because, because, yeah, he's strongly considering it. Because we all know, like, Cohen Carr played a lot in this game, he looked pretty solid. His shot's gonna probably yeah. he, need he some is, help, but he is energy and like momentum. Yeah. Whenever he makes a play, the crowd goes crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but the guys that didn't, Xavier Booker and uh, Jeremy Fears. Xavier Booker just didn't play enough. I know. Well, that's what I mean. Like yeah. those guys, we know have talent, and I think they could slowly move up. So if if they slowly start giving them more and more minutes, put pressure on the seniors, make the seniors play better then I think that's where you can get good production out of the team. How do you feel about Trey Holloman? I have no idea. Like, what? Yeah, it's hard to say. I don't know what his game is. Like, I don't know what his strengths are. To me, What is Trey Holloman? To me, honestly, he feels like a spot-up shooter. He feels he? like a corner three <laughs> kind of guy. Because I, that's where I end up seeing him a lot. Just in the corner? Yeah. It's just what it feels like. I... I haven't paid a ton of attention to Trey Holloman, but I just remember last year, like I felt like I would see him get like a corner three or something. Um, this this is know. this is disrespectful to say. And he is the one that hit the three in this, this game. This is disrespectful to say because he has a much better jumper. But it's a lot of times where he kind of looks like Tum Tum out there, <laughs> <laughs> Tum Tum Nairn. Yeah, and it's just like he's out there like running. <laughs> he's playing hard. Right. Like, what else does Trey Holloman do? That's what I. That's what I like. Yeah, he did hit a three. His jumper looks better. So right, that's cool. I mean, he got 17 minutes. Like I said, like Jeremy Fears could take over. Uh, that's that what slot, I expect. Basically, yeah. he's more talented. Uh, Jeremy Fears and Xavier Booker only played five and t- what is it, 12 minutes? So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not like I said. I'm not taking much into account on this game. They're going to play Southern Indiana tonight. Listen. If they lose again, then we got problems. Welcome to Division One basketball, Southern Indiana. Yeah. You have an opportunity to – no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not doing that. Yeah. So, I mean, if it happens, though, then we can maybe start to panic a little bit. Things are getting – yeah. Because they're going to go 0-2 going into Duke next week. Yeah. Um, which will not be fun. So I'm hoping Michigan State can turn it around. Uh, like we said, I, the team has a lot of talent, so I'm not too worried about that overall. It's just a rough way to start, you know, when you had such a such a big recruit, recruiting class coming in, highly ranked. They were fourth in the nation. I don't like. I also don't know like how you gauge this for rankings. Like they obviously have to drop, but like realistically, you could drop them out of the top 25. But at the same time, it's not gonna happen. No, it yeah. won't. But that's the thing. Like, it's hard to take anything away from one game. But, um, you want to talk about your Michigan Wolverines for a minute? Uh, yeah. They won their first. So, game. my mindset going into this season, after seeing all the preseason predictions of them like falling back, like farther than they've had than they have in a long time. Mm-hmm. A lot of people had them eleventh out of fourteen teams in the Big Ten, which is really interesting. Yeah, I personally felt that this team could be better than last year Mm -hmm. because most of last year was get it to Hunter, 
Right. Get him his shots. Make sure Jet stays in rhythm. Yeah. Make sure he shoots his threes. And then everybody figure it out from there. Like, well, we'll, we'll just figure it out. Mm-hmm. On defense, well, we'll just figure it out. Yeah. There was a complete failure balancing star players and young players. And now with Hunter and Jet out, they were both really good players. Mm-hmm. But with them out, I feel like there's more of a balance and they played extremely balanced Mm -hmm. in their first game against UNC Asheville. I was impressed. Uh, Doug McDaniel, this is his first year as a starter. Mm -hmm. He had 22 and eight assists, hit four threes. Uh, Olivier and Kamwa power forward transfer from Tennessee. Their big transfer. Mm -hmm. He had 25 and seven. He was a physical force. He He just looked really comfortable. Yeah. He could be a problem for a lot of Big Ten forwards. And overall, just the team just looked, they looked comfortable. Mm -hmm. They looked like they had chemistry. They looked like they knew what they were doing out there. There was no, like, no panicking, like shot clock going down, throwing up bad shots. Everything was natural. Everything flowed and everything made sense. Yeah. And you saw that very few times last year with Michigan basketball. And I'm just I'm happy with that from yeah. the jump. It looks so much more structured and logical yeah. than what last year's team was. Mm-hmm. Like there's a clear pecking order. Everybody knows what their role is. And they step into it when it when they need to do what they need to do. Now, like Michigan State, this is just one game. Right. But like Michigan State. They played a team that made the tournament last year. Mm -hmm. UNC Asheville was a tournament team. Michigan wasn't. So some people had UNC Asheville playing this game close. Right. Michigan got up big early, and they maintained it for the most of the game. Mm -hmm. They they hit threes when they need. They hit their open threes. Will Cheddar looked comfortable. He hit a three. Mm -hmm. Terrence Williams hit hit some threes. His jumper looks improved. I, I I was just happy with what it was. Yeah. It looked really good. Now, I, I don't know what it's going to look like when Jawan Howard comes back. Right. Because he's out uh, recovering from a heart surgery. Mm-hmm. Phil Martelli is in his place in the meanwhile. But, man, they they look cool and comfortable under Phil Martelli. Yeah. They, they look pretty good. And they're in the same boat as Michigan State where their first, like, real test will be next week against yeah. St. John's. Uh, St. John's. Yeah. Another, kinda- another team that's, yeah. They're well, they the got a brand up. new team, basically. They're on the come Rick up, Patino. though. Uh, so, they make the tournament last year, St. John's? Um, they, they, were they, like, first out? I think they were first out. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember. I knew they were close. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, same boat, better result. Um, and, yeah, maybe Michigan will get back to the old school. Well, I say old school, but a few years B-line ago. line yeah, yeah. You know, spread the ball around. Everybody shoots. Fun to watch. Listen, when Juwan, maybe they get there. When Juwan first got to Michigan, he inherited a team that knew what they were. Right. They played for Beeline. They all they were all experienced. They knew how to play basketball. Mm-hmm. Juwan just had to add a few little bits of expertise, but they were a well-oiled machine when he came in. Yeah. And they've had to figure it out mm-hmm. since then. New players, a whole bunch of new stuff, and. I like how they looked in the first game. Yeah. It was very encouraging. Mm-hmm. And now to the college football side. It's a big game this week. A couple big games. Michigan State, some Ohio would, State. Some would say the first uh, good game for Michigan this season. Some would say yeah. that. I'm starting to lean that way, but yeah. <laughs> um, Michigan State plays Ohio State, so that'll be a butt kicking. Um, Listen, they got their first win. I mean, not their first win, <laughs> but they got a win. Harlan, a solid win. Harlan Barnett's first win. Yeah. Good yeah. for him. They got a, they got a solid win, too. Yeah. Um, and then Michigan playing Penn State. Quick, before we move on to Michigan, I just want to make a quick little aside. note. Yeah. yeah, aside about Michigan State. Mm-hmm. Did you watch any of that game or no. see any highlights? No. Have you seen any of Sam Levitt, the freshman? Uh, I've heard of him basically he's he's got some ability yeah more than Caden Hauser 
in terms of I think he has a stronger arm and he can run. Yeah, I mean I know Sam Levitt makes things really interesting when he's in the game. I know people were kind of talking about him, so curious. But um yeah. yeah, so Michigan obviously drowned in controversy right now. And uh the Big Ten keeps kind of talking about some sort of punishment coming it's, down the road. It's it's almost it's too much to go into. Yeah. Yeah. The NCAA doesn't know what to do. The Big Ten doesn't know whether to suspend Jim Harbaugh. Santa Ono is willing to take his own legal action. Mm-hmm. It, it's just it's so much. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack. We're not going to go into it because every major news radio station has gone into it. Um, and there just there hasn't been any extra real information yet. And Michigan apparently has a bunch of stuff that they're supposed to release. Big Ten has stuff they're supposed to release. So. We're not even going to worry about it. We'll just talk about the the game at hand, and it's going to be a good one. Unless Michigan wins, because then everybody will be mad. And if they lose, everybody will be excited. It's going to be a lose-lose situation, no matter what. It's going to be a lot. Unfortunately. But the only win, the winners will be like Michigan fans. That's, right. That's yeah, like, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Everybody else will be bah humbug. But uh, how are you feeling about this game with Penn State? If this was a night game, I'd be terrified. Yeah. If this was a 3:30 game, I'd be even more, I'm not even more. Still pretty uneasy because the game would end around like 6:37 and when they turn on those lights, <laughs> it's still a different at- the, the fourth quarter would be a different game. Yeah. This being a noon game? Yeah. Penn State has something with their night games. Listen, it, it's a, it's some magic when mm-hmm. they have that wide out and those fans are going crazy. Yeah. But the the last two times Michigan has played Penn State at Penn State at noon, they've won. Mm. Both games were close. I don't expect this to be a blowout on either side. Both teams have really good defenses. Mm-hmm. I think Michigan's offense is an advantage over Penn State's offense. Yeah. Even though Michigan hasn't played the best competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penn State, there are there very few games playing up um, higher level competition. Haven't been very impressive. Yeah. Ohio State, their offense was flat out terrible. And Ohio State just had to break a few plays to win the game. Hmm. They just had to score over 20, basically. And I think this game might come down to something like that. Whoever hits 21 or 21st might be the winner. Okay. And I think it's a good chance Michigan hits it first. Penn State... I think their front seven on defense is their biggest advantage. They have several pros. I think their defensive backs are good, but nothing special. Michigan is going to take shots. They've trusted J.J. McCarthy more and more as the season has gone on. In the game last week against Purdue, they let J.J. play almost like to like the four or three-minute point in the fourth quarter. I think just to get him some reps – like in a fourth quarter, just to let him play out like almost a full game yeah. for the first time, like all season, because mm-hmm. this is going to be like his first big one where right. he plays every minute. Yeah, meaningful game. Yeah, I trust JJ. I trust the play calling. The run game needs to be a little more consistent because every team has been keying on that and it's worked for the most part. Mm-hmm. But I give Michigan the slight advantage in this game. And I think it's probably something like 27 to 17. Okay. Should be Yeah, something like that for Michigan. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I don't trust um, Drew Aller against Michigan's defense, really. Mm-hmm. Especially if you get some pressure on him, he gets very inaccurate and he starts making mistakes. Yeah. And his receivers don't consistently get separation. Right against better teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it should be good to see because we finally will be able to understand like where Michigan is at because we've seen Penn State play Ohio State. So now when Michigan plays Penn State, we can kind of compare and contrast and figure out you know where Michigan's at on their season. Are they a bunch of fakers with their easy schedule, or are they real deal and you know they just they're just a good team? Can I say something about that? <laughs> yeah. I I, th- I think there's a lot of hip- <laughs> hypocritical stuff 
with those statements. Yeah. There are people that say stuff like Michigan's schedule is easy, mm-hmm. so we know have no idea how good they are. Yeah. But then they also say, like, Ohio State obviously isn't the best team in the country. They haven't been impressive all season. Yeah, and they're they, ranked number one. And they also beat Penn State, who also hasn't looked very impressive. Yeah. So where does that put Michigan? Yeah. If Ohio State isn't impressive, and they're clearly not number one, and Penn State lost to Ohio State, and they're also not very impressive. Yeah. What does that mean? It means that if Michigan wins, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Like I, I've said, like in the past few, Michigan just has to win out. Yeah, that that's that's the plan. That's what it's been from the beginning of the season. But I just think it's funny how people say that one thing. Like Michigan, we don't know what they are. It's so easy. Yeah, but they're also like Ohio State and Penn State aren't impressive. They shouldn't be ranked highly. So should Mich- should Michigan be ahead of them? Yeah, is their schedule too easy? Like I, well, I think so that's, weird. that's yeah. a big problem in college football. Just this season in general, like Georgia, like they have Georgia's done- Georgia's. I mean, cut schedule hasn't been right. t- difficult in years. They haven't done anything special to be like, oh, they look really – like, you know, the past couple of years, it's like Georgia is dominating people, and they just look like an elite team, and you know. But this year, it's like, eh, they look okay. Ohio State, eh, they look okay. Michigan, eh, they look okay. Like, everybody has their – Here's my thing, though. Is it because Georgia was in the SEC? Because Michigan has absolutely stomped everybody they played this season. Yeah. I think that's part of it. It is. It's always but been kind part, of part way. of it now is is the sign stealing stuff. Yeah, but also, like, well, when, people, a, when a team is this dominant, no matter what the schedule is, yeah, they should they deserve some credit. Yeah, because teams don't do this all the time. Right. I think people just have this notion with the Big Ten that they just don't think it's very good, and unfortunately, it's kind of turned out that way because of. Michigan and Ohio State losing in college playoff games. Now, Ohio State almost made it last year, but at the same time, it's like Michigan lost to TCU in a close one. Ohio State lost to Georgia in a close one. And I think just not being able to get over the hump is hurting the Big Ten. Plus, of course, Michigan State falling off the map and, you know, teams like Iowa kind of struggling with offense and Wisconsin. Iowa might win the Big Ten West, and they can barely score 14 points. Yeah. Like, a bunch of Big Ten teams Uh, that we're used to seeing in the top 25 are just lacking, and I think it's so top-heavy that people are are struggling to gauge where the Big Ten's at. That's just my guess. Um, Along the top 25, like, nothing nothing radical has changed. The top, what is it, nine are all the same. Yeah. Uh, There's been no movement. Um, Louisville is still winning, which is fun. That's the team I've been watching. Um, and there's not too many crazy, crazy games uh, this week. Utah and Washington, one of the better games this week, as well as Missouri's playing Tennessee, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. That's a 330 game on CBS. Yeah. So yeah. Ole Miss plays Georgia. Ole Miss yes. is ranked ninth. That's the other and one. And they're eight and one. Mm-hmm. But they've. Yeah, they're another team. Yeah. They just kind of crawled their way to eight and one. And okay, sure. It's good for Ole Miss. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, uh, the team that I feel like we have to talk about is Oklahoma State. Listen, man. What a way. I brought up Ali Gordon last week. I know, and he just keeps rolling. But what a way to send Oklahoma packing. Yeah. They said, okay, go join the – they're joining the SEC, right? Yeah. Um. Okay, see you later. And they just beat up on him. And like you said, like, Ali Gordon – I'm he glad might, that you mentioned it last week because yeah. he just continues to put up numbers. He might go to New York. Yeah. Oklahoma State's schedule from this point on isn't hard. Mm-hmm. Like, if they go 10-2 and two and he keeps rattling off crazy games yeah. and they make the Big 12 championship, he there's he needs to be in New York. Yeah. Because he's going to have crazy numbers. Yeah. I, the only problem is that he's a running back, and we know how hard it is for running backs to get there. It's not, it's not hard for them to get to New York. Yeah. It's hard for them, for them to, to win. win. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's you're hard right. for them to win. Um, but they have to put out put up like staggering numbers. Yeah. They're gonna have to make a big run, I think, uh, to get they going. might have to win the Big Twelve. I was gonna say they probably yeah. will, to be honest. But they've I mean, at this point they've kind of proven that they have a chance to. Um there's there's a a chance the way that they're playing right now. But uh I felt like they had to be mentioned. James Madison, of course, the team we've been yeah. following. They've officially 
sent a request to be bowl eligible. Oh, really? And be able to not only win their conference, but to play in a bowl game. That would be... Because they deserve to get that New Year's Six spot. Yeah. Because it looks like they're going to go undefeated. Right. That would be cool if they were able to do that. Um, Liberty also made it in the top 25. 9-0. Kansas is going for their eighth win. They're seven and two. Mm-hmm. Lance Leipold, I hope you stay in Kansas forever. Because <laughs> what he what he's doing, it I I think it's really understated. Yeah, how great of a job he's. This is year three mm-hmm. at Kansas. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he is like they're just playing good football every week. Yeah, you this is it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. Oh, yeah, I was looking at the AP. That's why I was seeing Liberty in them. Um, but we did see Iowa jump back into the top 25, which oh is kind of funny. They, they, they're they not a top 25 team. They're not. Come on, man. 10-7 to 7 Don't over come Northwestern. Listen, as a college ball sicko, I wish I was at Wrigley Field. By the way, they played at Wrigley Field. Yeah. Iowa and Northwestern. For that disgusting game. Hey, do you I wanna, wish I was there. Let me recap this game really quick because it's really easy. Oh, my. Here's all the drives. Iowa. Punt, 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 punt. Iowa punt. Northwestern punt. <laughs> yes. Iowa missed field goal. Northwestern punt. Iowa interception. Northwestern punt. Iowa punt. Northwestern punt. Iowa punt. Northwestern punt. <laughs> Iowa punt. Northwestern punt. End of the half. Yeah. Northwestern punt. <laughs> Iowa touchdown. Northwestern punt. Iowa punt. Northwestern downs. Iowa punt. Northwestern touchdown. Iowa field goal. End of game. If Holy crap. Listen, if that's not football, then what is? What is football? And a lot that. of these punts were three and outs. Yeah. Just straight three and out punt, three and out punt, back and forth. They it listen, they, so they sent football bad. back to like the 1890s when it was. It, it was yeah. bad. They would have made the founders proud with that game. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. Hilarious. Um, and I guess one other team that I wanted to mention too is Notre Dame losing to Clemson. Embarrassing. It was a great feeling. I yeah. like when Notre Dame loses. Yeah, that that resume boosting win Ohio State had over Notre Dame. Yeah, not looking so great off. anymore. Also, USC is officially dead. Oh, I uh, love Al- that. Too. Alex, Alex Grinch got fired. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish he stayed so they could just stay a clown show. Yeah. Uh, Caleb Williams gave it everything he had, but they lost to Washington. Yeah. And they got to play Oregon. That's their consolation prize this week. Yeah. They go to Oregon. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, USC. Yeah. It's a bad time to be struggling in the Pac-12. That's for sure. Yeah. So I mean, the league is over after this, but then USC has to go to the Big Ten, and I don't know what they're going to do next year. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't know what they're going to do. Oregon, I feel like is they're the one team that's prepared. Yeah. Oregon has the talent and the play style mm-hmm. to not be afraid. Yeah. That'll be fun. But Yeah, USC, you're going to get your teeth kicked in most likely. Yeah. All righty. Wow, that took up a lot of time. We got to get to to the NFL to make our picks. Who won last week? <sighs> Me, I guess. <laughs> you yes. took that deep breath. Okay, you did. You won by one, and it was all oh, the boy. afternoon games you won. Hmm. I won like a lot of the early slate. Um, you had Pittsburgh on Thursday night, but then I had Kansas City uh, Sunday morning. I had Minnesota crazy comeback by Josh Dobbs. Um, I had Green Bay. Over Brett Rippon. Um, but then you had Houston over Tampa, Indianapolis over Carolina, Philly over Dallas, Cincinnati over Buffalo, and then you picked the Jets, which saved me. So it is now standing at 76 to 84, and we have a lovely Thursday night football game tonight. Carolina at Chicago. I'll tell you, I'm not even watching this game. Game of the year, Joey. Game of the year. Listen, we're going to tell our grandkids about Tyson Badgen. Maybe. We're going to tell them about the quarterback from Shepherd College. <laughs> University. Whichever one. Yeah. Shepherd. He actually, he played well yeah. against the Saints last week. I like that he plays tough. He had rookie D2 interceptions, but what do you expect? Yeah. The kid has some talent. Mm-hmm. I'm taking the Bears. Unfortunately, I think I have to take the Bears as well. Is Tyson Badgen starting again? Yeah. Let's go, Bears, all the way. I think Carolina just is in trouble. They're just they're just not good right now. And uh, Bryce Young 
He's need, suffering. He's going to need a lot more time. He is suffering, and I feel bad for him because it's a, he he just doesn't have anything around him. Yeah, to help him enough. Yeah, but he's also just not making the correct decisions. True. I listen. I'd be indecisive too, if that's what I was dealing with in Carolina. Yeah, like he he can't do what C.J. Stroud is doing in Houston right now. Mm. This is different. Yeah. Uh, Indianapolis at New England. This is the it's uh, ugly. this is the Germany game. It's yeah, kind of Frankfurt game. Unfortunate. <laughs> Why is that? A, what country should it be? These te- no, I'm just saying these teams aren't good. That's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll, that was a weird setup. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Germany. Congratulations. <laughs> They got a better game. Well, actually, the game wasn't that good last week, but they got to see good teams, I guess. I forgot New England almost beat the Commanders. Washington yeah. is so confusing. Yeah. How do these teams play in Germany? Teams always play different overseas. You know what? Give me the Colts. Okay. I'm going to go with the Patriots. Even in another country, I just can't take the Patriots. Yeah. I don't love it, but Patriots are playing decently um, right now. And I don't know. I think it's a flip, enough of a flip game. Houston at Cincinnati, this could be a fun one. I'm hoping. CJ Stroud had one of, one of the best rookie QB performances ever. Yeah. He said that was one of the best. 70 and five touchdowns. That was one of the best games we've seen from a quarterback just in a little while. To Did be you? I, I don't know if you saw. So. Th- the NFL YouTube channel, do you watch highlights on there, like after games? Sometimes. sometimes. So I watched all of the the Houston highlights, and at the end, they show the play before the touchdown for Houston, and then they just showed C.J. Stroud celebrating. <laughs> they didn't show – they didn't put the clip of the touchdown. <laughs> they just skipped straight to the celebration. That's awesome. And it, I was very annoyed in the moment. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, Cincinnati looks like they're back on track right now. Jamar Chase, though, I don't know what his status is. He's – Kind of banged up, got a sandwiched a little bit last week, so he had like a back injury and stuff. So I don't know if he's going to play or not. C.J. Stroud is having a better season than Joe Burrow. Yeah, that is wild. That's because Joe Burrow started off so slow. Yeah. But. Nico Collins has the same amount of touchdowns as Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. What a weird season. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a strange season. Mm-hmm. I'm taking Cincinnati. Okay. If it was in Houston, I might have taken Houston. But. I know. I I kind of feel that way too i think i have to go cincinnati as well um i think houston's good they're on the come up but they're just they're not quite there yet their running game sucks that is weird because damian pierce is a really good young running back yeah well he was hurt last week so devin singletary started but even still like damian pierce has not played well this year so yeah they need to get their run game going uh new orleans at minnesota joshua dobbs let's talk about the story of Josh Dobbs. The only thing that stinks is like a lot of people are saying Joshua Dobbs like made CJ Stroud irrelevant, which sucks because CJ Stroud had one of a historic moment and Josh Dobbs neglected it because he also had an he, historic I mean, he moment. did have a historic moment. He literally had was just having stuff drawn up mm-hmm. and learning like the pre snap counts on the sideline. Yeah. They were saying that Kevin O'Connell was literally he- telling him. As he was huddling up, what the routes were, and that he had to know. And there was a couple times where apparently he like leaned over and asked Jordan Addison like what his route combo was or whatever, and he just put it all together. It was pretty cool. He got a master's in aerospace engineering. (laughs) Yeah, he's a very smart guy. Right. And I might buy a Josh Dobbs jersey because I this is the stuff. This is this is why I love sports. Stuff like this. Yeah. It's his what seventh team or whatever. I think so. And like, and he's six been years. on. He's been on like four teams this year alone. Well, with, between like yeah, the second half of last season and this season. Yeah, yeah. Because he started, Incredible. he started this off season on the Lions practice squad. I didn't know that. Yeah, man, the Lions could have or something like that as their backup. Something like maybe not their practice squad, but the Lions had Nate Sudfeld. What season. in the world? So who are you taking? New Orleans. With all that being said, I am taking the New Orleans Saints. Okay. Because their defense is still like we're pretty good, and I I love the Josh Dobbs story, but the Saints. I I don't know if they can put together what they did last week, mm-hmm. but they looked like a real team. Yeah. The past two weeks. Yeah. And Taysom Hill is still a machine. Yeah. 
Yeah, their offense is still weird, but Taysom Hill is kind of keeping their offense alive by just yeah. bringing up trick plays. I'm going to go with the Josh Dobbs experience. He's going to get his. Uh, I don't blame you. Going to get. He's going to get his home game. I almost hope you win this game. So he's going to get to go home and get a big cheer from the crowd. I'm sure. You win this game. I win all the rest. How about that? <laughs> Let's hope not. Uh, Green Bay at Pittsburgh. Both of these teams. Yeah. I wish Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh had Josh Dobbs. Yeah. I was about to say I wish, I wish Pitt, Pittsburgh had. Joshua Dobbs. I'll tell you, I'm not thinking hard about it. I'm going with Pittsburgh. They just stinking figure out a way to win games. Jordan Love on the road. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to Pittsburgh, too. I just, I don't know. Pittsburgh's just right there again in the mix. Remember when Kenny Pickett was a preseason god? Yeah. That seems like a really long time ago, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Tennessee at Tampa Bay. Will Levis part two. It was okay. Will the sequel be better than the original, Joey? His second game was okay. Obviously, wasn't as electrifying as, you know, the touchdowns for, to John. I completely forgot that game at Pittsburgh. Yeah. He played decent. Mm-hmm. So it's actually the third. Right. <laughs> okay. The trilogy. Part three. Yes. I think he's going to step huh. back up again. Like, he's still making good throws. Um, you just saw some of the downfalls last week, I think. I think that Tampa Bay defense is going to make it really tough for them. I'm they going could. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's defense is not as good as they've been. But when they're on, they they look like. Yeah, yeah, they could give them problems. I think this is a decent enough game that I could take Tennessee. This might be a Derrick Henry game, honestly. Uh, San Francisco at Jacksonville. A lot of people think this could be a really good one. I don't know how to feel. is 6-3. and three. Yeah. And it feels like they're not really a six and three team. I don't. They're they're so hard to judge. Yeah. And San Francisco has been up and down. They've lost three straight going into their bye. They're coming off their bye, so they're hoping to get things turned around. I don't think they lose four straight. I'm going 49ers. Okay. This could be a bad week for me. I'm going to go Jacksonville. For some reason, I really like the home teams this week for the most part. Um. And I don't know. If San Francisco loses, that would be wild that there's a potential that I believe San Francisco and Buffalo could be out of the playoff picture. Now, I don't think that's going to stay that way, but for a week or two, it would be. Um, Cleveland at Baltimore. Cleveland just keeps kind of churning out some wins here and there. Cleveland's defense is for real. Yeah. Baltimore's offense is starting to take that step. Their defense is also really good this year. It's in Baltimore. Yep. Lamar Jackson hasn't been like great these past few weeks, but they're still blowing teams out. Yeah. Well, a lot of the time too, that I noticed Lions like teams. when they've gotten into the red zone, they've run the ball a lot more with their running backs. So I Lamar, feel like Gus Edwards is going to be around forever. Yeah. Well, and then Keaton Mitchell had a huge game last week. I like him a lot. So I don't know what they're going to do with their running back rotation, but it could be ugly. Give me the Browns. Okay. You already know where I'm going. The Browns? Baltimore. I know. I know. <laughs> um, now, the fun one. Detroit at the Chargers. Another home game for the Lions. Uh, we're not even going to act like we're taking the Chargers, right? No. Like, it's, this isn't a... Brandon Staley is on that sideline, Joey. I know. The the oh, I forget. Your LA Chargers are playing your Detroit Lions. Yeah. This has to be a tough game internally for you. No, it doesn't. Very tough. It doesn't. <laughs> The Lions will always win out. <laughs> There's going to be more Honolulu blue than powder blue in the stadium. I feel like the blues might just like <laughs> mesh. Be, yeah. It's going to be just a weird mesh in the stadium. Yeah. Maybe. They're barely, like, Chargers fans barely exist anymore. They're mm-hmm. all in San Diego. Yeah. LA people don't care. Mm. They're too busy doing other things. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Detroit. I hope this is a good game. I, I hope it's a, a fun back and forth kind of game. Who's supposed to be back? That's that was out for the Lions. David Montgomery. Good. Supposed to be. How about Ragnow? That I don't know. I haven't looked at any injury updates. Okay. But um I think James Houston is getting close. Um, and then we're still a few weeks away from CJ Gardner Johnson, but we'll see. We'll maybe get to see Donovan Peoples Jones action. That would be interesting. I don't know how much how much time they're gonna give him still coming from the the trade deadline depends. 
Oh, boy. Atlanta at Arizona. Oh, Kyler Murray might be back, though. Atlanta. Which is good news because Clayton Toon looked awful. That's not his fault. <laughs> That's it's, not his fault. It's most likely not, but... His top three receivers were under 5'9", and he played against the Browns' defense on the road. <laughs> what was Clayton Toon supposed to do, Joey? Yeah. That's true. They set him up to die. How do you feel? Set him up to die out there. How do you feel about Arthur Smith benching B. John Robinson after the fumble? Arthur Smith gave like a five minute explanation for why B. John Robinson didn't get red zone touches. Mm -hmm. And I watched the first 30 seconds and I turned it off. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't want to hear anything from Arthur Smith. He probably talked about his favorite guy, Johnny Smith, as well. Listen, bro. Five catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Johnny Smith is the truth. Atlanta by 100. <laughs> uh, I want to pick Arizona so bad just for the Kyler Murray comeback, but I don't know if I can. They're... I'm picking Arizona. I can't. You're a bold man. I Joe can't Texas. deal with Arthur Smith. I, I, I don't pay t- attention to him, so I don't <laughs> deal with him from the jump. <laughs> but and then, uh, yeah, I know he's an interest. He, almost, he looks like Paul Blart in the face. A little bit. <laughs> with his mustache. A little bit. Um, we're going to skip right over this next game, Dallas and the Giants. Dallas at home. Poor Tommy DeVito, man. Poor Tommy DeVito. It might be Matt Barkley. There's been rumor that it might oh be Matt Barkley. Oh, my God. Why is he still in the NFL? <laughs> I don't know for sure. Uh, I, again, I haven't checked any updates. But If I was Matt Barkley, I wouldn't want to start that game. Because Daniel Jones is now out for the season, which stinks. Tyrod Taylor, they don't know if he's going to be able to come back. It's just going to be a mess. Just play Tommy. He can run read options too. Run yeah, him as much as Daniel Jones. Maybe the problem is that the last time when Tommy DeVito plays, they just give the ball to Saquon Barkley Listen, and say, "Go." Call some trick plays. Get creative. Yeah. Come on, man. Just let him throw. You're the Giants. It doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. See what you have in the kid. Yeah, you're expected to lose. Let him throw the ball. If he throws three picks, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Washington at Seattle. This could be a fun game. Sam Howells looks pretty good. These are the types of games where Washington, oh, my God. Seattle has been close to losing, like, every game, but they just keep pulling out wins. Mm -hmm. Except they got blown out by the Ravens. This is a mistake. I'm taking Washington. This is going to be a loss. I know it is. Okay. I will take Seattle because they're at home. Yeah. (laughs) All right, now we got the real ugly one. Sunday night football. Your New York Jets taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. This is more interesting now. I guess, With yeah. Antonio Pierce coaching that team. Yeah, they, they got a fire got under some, him. They got a little bit of sauce. Yeah. Listen, Max Crosby is just smoking up, doing interviews. It seems like living life. Vegas should just hire some terrible coach at the beginning of every season. Fire him after like two games, then bring an interim in to fire up the team. Because it's been working. They should have kept Rich Basaccia. They probably should have. Yeah, Antonio Pierce is giving them some some juice. Mm-hmm. I guess Zach Wilson is back to be Zach Wilson. That's as much as I can say about him. Yeah, I'm taking the Raiders. <sighs> probably another loss, but I don't know. Listen. I you see what take, they just did to the Giants, yeah. and the the Jets are better than them, but they're not that much better. Yeah, I want to take the Raiders, but I think I have to take the Jets here just to mount to come back. You and Chris are going down. Well, you've been picking the Jets the last couple of weeks. So. True. Um, Monday night football. Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. Was that necessary? <laughs> trying to hype it up a little bit more. You said they're like we're a Denver radio station. Taking on the actually, Buff- they would probably be more depressed. They wouldn't have put that much energy. Into Taking it. on the Buffalo Bills, who stink right now. And I like the Buffalo Bills, but they are struggling. Give me Buffalo. Yeah, me too. I thought they were going to play better against Cincinnati, and they still struggled. But you never know which team is showing up. Yeah, but I got to go with them on Monday night. Dalton Kincaid's looked like the real deal. I have him on my bench, which has been fun. So actually, I don't have him on my bench anymore. I released him before nice. he got on the hot streak. Nice. All righty. Well, this has been uh, views from the sidelines, and uh, 
We'll have more college basketball talk probably next week. We'll have, I mean, we'll get to recap the Michigan, Ohio, or Penn State. Jeez. Uh, maybe Michigan State will look decent against Ohio State. Maybe. There's hope. Um, probably won't talk about the NBA. <laughs> We can um, give a little update. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. There's some good stuff going on. And then uh, we're already at week 11 of the NFL. Doesn't that feel crazy? That, man, it's going by so like fast. Like Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Anyway, this has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time.